It's Monday. It's October 23rd. And the word of the day is throttle bottom, which means an extremely inept person in public office. Used in a sentence, House Republicans are currently losing a race to the throttle bottom to themselves. Yep. Yeah. Uh oh, I gotta go change my Tinder profile. That is not what I was looking for, everybody. No. I gotta... <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene is gonna be heartbroken. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delay from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, a lying poker player gets called on his bluff. A lying congressman does too. <laughs> and Jim Jordan angrily looks for the receipt for his custom solid gold gavel that he bought. I didn't either. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, the cool, crisp days of autumn are upon us. Are you ready to pumpkin spice it up? Oh, not a sin a minute too soon, let me say. You kids temp three pump no whip soy peppermint mocha you, yet. What? what? My drink order doesn't make any puns. You, I don't. You got, the, you got there with a a you know it. Was that a you know it? I was uh, there. The, the, the bookends were to mocha? be a, a you know it. Okay. <laughs> See, I think it was. I thought it was ka. Was it like got it or I? I could. I really. I had no idea. It was both, right, Eli? Yes, it was, it was a double. Yes, yeah. Mm. Yep. Okay. In our lead story tonight, we have some important news about the Speaker of the House. They do not exist. Does not exist. Not a position we have right now. Former Speaker Kevin McCarthy got ousted by the lunatic fringe of the lunatic party on October 3rd. And ever since, we've been watching a three-week-long Monty Python sketch about racist cats trying to herd other racist yep. cats all while being herded by other, other racist cats. It's very confusing. And much like that sketch, we got to see a bunch of assholes and everyone lost. Uh, Good times. Strong disagree, Heath. This is the most entertaining I've found C-SPAN in years. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's it's got one of those great, like, if I didn't have to live through it moments yet again. So... The future, in case you're listening, I know you're a big fan. Yes, we polluted your world and failed to rein in climate change while we still had the chance, but we also gave you a decade of comedy gold in the middle of your history lessons. I feel like it balances out. It was a win for comedy. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So, for the record, the GOP has 221 members in the House, and they need 217 votes to elect a speaker. That, that first number is bigger than the second number. Okay. That's the important thing here. But that didn't stop the Republican Party from losing every single vote so far. But before they even got to the voting stage, the GOP had already failed. The first nominee was Steve Scalise of Louisiana and of blood cancer. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm not saying anyone deserves to have blood cancer, but... Republicans all deserve blood cancer for sure. <laughs> sure, anyone. obviously, yeah. yeah and good. their top choice had literal blood cancer from being evil. It's too on the nose. Who's our top choice? Blood cancer Steve. That's what happened to them. But Scalise couldn't even get enough support to attempt a floor vote, so he dropped out before that even happened. That was their first salvo. Not a great start. All right, guys, for the last time, the votes are yay or nay. Stop writing too shootable on your ballots. I don't know what that means. <laughs> if you use a hole punch, that means the same thing. Stop it. <laughs> and that brings us to the number two choice on the list of virtuous GOP statesmen. That would be sexual abuse friendly wrestling coach Jim Jordan yep. of Ohio. He got the second nomination and he took it to a vote. And the winner was... Democrat Hakeem Jeffries. Jordan <laughs> got 200 votes, and Jeffries got 212. Yep. But without 217 votes, nobody became speaker. So Jordan called for another vote. In round two, he got 199 votes. He lost a vote for just trying again. So he tried again, again. But this time, he did go ahead and make some smart moves to shore up the support he needed no, he didn't at all. He got 194 <laughs> votes in round three no. on Friday. And, and according to several Republican House members, they got 
death threats from rabid Jim Jordan fans, and they pulled their support. And so did the GOP as a whole when they finally rescinded his nomination. So now they're back to square one, trying to find a person with the perfect, insane, happy medium of evil that only loses two votes from the far right for like knowing a black guy and two moderate conservatives votes are lost on the other side of the party for knowing one black guy. Exactly. It's tricky <laughs> stuff to work yeah. out. No, it's a thin gap to hit. Remember, this is all predicated on the idea that Kevin McCarthy was too bipartisan, right? That's the problem <laughs> yeah. you're trying to correct here. Right. Meanwhile, the Democrats are getting to play Rochambeau with someone who lets you go first every time. It's the <laughs> fucking right. best. Going first is bad in Rochambeau, I'm pretty sure. Wouldn't you want to go second? No, yeah. you want to go. You, you're the kicker first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also worth mentioning, two after Jordan's loss in round two on Thursday, there was a brief moment of somewhat bipartisan support for an interim speaker position. The current speaker pro tempore, Republican Patrick McHenry, would be given the power to do some amount of something while the idiots who theoretically control the House figure their shit out. But the lunatic fringe eventually realized like how patronizing that was and how it was bad for them. So they refused to get on board. Well, and on both sides, that's my favorite part of this whole debacle. Because, yes, this is obviously the way to fucking go. But the moderate wing doesn't like it because it'll give holds out somebody to compare Jim Jordan to. Right. Because then they'll be like, oh, it's either Jim Jordan or this asshole. Uh, and the Looney Tunes wing doesn't like it because it would allow work to happen. And their whole thing is not wanting that to happen. So the only people the compromise placated were the already placated. That's how bereft of ideas these people really are. Yeah, sitting there in their Burger King crowns. This doesn't feel like the win I thought it would. I don't know why we <laughs> demanded these. These are not... Uh... All right, so Republicans, if you're listening, just a couple tips. First of all, keep your head up. Don't be sad. This is not the absolute biggest failure in the history of a controlling party electing a speaker. Nathaniel Banks needed 133 floor votes, and it took 60 days to make that happen. And the political climate of 1855, when that happened, was a lot less divisive than it is now. So <laughs> it's really fair to hold you to that same standard anyway. Also, while you're pondering the next guy, maybe think about someone who's into uh, consensual and has blood that's not <laughs> trying to actively murder him from the inside of his body because he's evil. I'm just saying, just a thought, just a thought. Check it out. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Come on, just 10 minutes. No right, man. Please. No. Heath, <sighs> Heath, who is this? Oh, hey, Noah. It's my brain. I really want to go outside for a walk today. I know I should. I know it's good for me, but my brain just will not do it. I want to watch Parks and Rec again. I mean, Heath, have you tried therapy? What, for this? Therapy? Yeah. Yeah, therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of working against yourself. Come on, man. Just through the episodes. We're watching through the episodes. I don't know, Noah. Finding a therapist can be a huge hassle, right? Well, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Speaking of breakups, I'd like to go over our last five tonight while you're trying to fall asleep. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, man. I know. I know. All right, Noah, I am definitely in. How do I sign up? Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right. Thanks, Noah. You hear that, brain? Looks like you and I are going to get along after all. Yeah, maybe. Hey, remember in 2006 when you said you too to someone who said enjoy your meal? Yeah, man. You bring it up a lot. They weren't I do. eating. Why would you? Why would yeah, they enjoy got it. Meal? I know. I hate myself. <laughs> and we're back. Next up in headlines in Flush Down the Drain News. In a shocking turn of events, a community whose barrier to entry is thinking that you can be good at gambling, professional poker players, might be on the slightly gullible you can side. be good at gambling. I'm as it was that. revealed this week that a poker player who said he had they terminal cancer poker, the best players and accepted tens of thousands of dollars in donations so he could play in the World Series of Poker Tournament in Las Vegas now admits it was all a lie. Okay. 
I'm, I'm not saying these people deserve to be defrauded. What I am saying is that the people who donate to a dude who bluffs for a living so that he can gamble their money away are the lowest rung on my <laughs> yeah. sympathy scale. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Steve Scalise and then this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the poker player in question is Rob Mercer, who uh, looks like if wraparound sunglasses could be a person. Uh, and he posted his GoFundMe back in June claiming to have stage four colon cancer. And the poker community rallied around with several prominent players donating donating between thirty and $50,000 total, uh, many of the match donations what? he received, and they even gifted Mercer and his family a suite at the Bellagio to enjoy while he lived out his final wish. Okay, hey, uh, first red flag there, the main event of that tournament famously costs $10,000, <laughs> not thirty to $50,000, and professional poker players would definitely know that. Yeah, second red flag is that he can't think of anything more important to do with his thirty to fifty grand as he's dying of colon cancer. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I just right. wanna lose at cards one more time. <laughs> Uh, but questions arose almost as soon as Mercer arrived in Vegas. Uh, he was very quickly spotted by fellow players gambling the entry money he'd been given on the floor, and his father was almost immediately engaged in an incident with casino police, which the Bellagio refused to provide the details of. How would other people know which money he was using on the floor, though? They were like, hey, Rob, is that cancer money or regular money that you're right. gambling See, with I, right now? It looks <laughs> like cancer money, those chips. But also, what? they they caught him gambling with the with the gambling money. Like that's like isn't that like stretching out before the game for poker players? I don't <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> All right, more forgiving than I thought. Uh, but it gets worse. In his original GoFundMe, Mercer's proof was a screenshot of my chart of a note of him asking his doctor for confirmation of his cancer diagnosis. But when he was confronted about the lack of you know, the response to that question, he just provided that note again, but with a later date on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a HIPAA violation for you to even ask. But yes, I did email the oncologist to check in. He wrote back, still cancer with a new date yeah, on it. That no, did yeah, but trust me, though. No, so his proof is him saying, so how about that cancer I got, huh, to his doctor? Mm. <laughs> Amazing. But... As I said this week, Mercer decided to cash in his chips, if you will, admitting to Las Vegas Review Journal, quote, I did lie about having colon cancer. I don't have colon cancer. I use that to cover my situation. What I did was wrong. I shouldn't have told people I have colon cancer. I did that just as a spur of the moment thing. Is he five? <laughs> <laughs> is he something? giving a book report on yeah, this? Yeah, really, something? what I did last summer. <laughs> to be fair, this is what he did last summer, so, you know. I did that just as a spur of the moment thing when someone asked me what kind of cancer I had. I'm sorry for not being honest about what my situation was. <laughs> if I would have done that from day one, who knows what would have happened? And uh, I think we all know that you would have not lost 10 grand in three hours, yeah, Rob, it, because that's how well you did in the tournament. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it sounds from that like he thinks his problem is which cancer he pretended to have. Doesn't it? Like it reads like like if like like he thinks that if he'd gone for cancer of the ear, this would have been okay or something. <laughs> yeah. So for their part, GoFundMe is already issuing refunds to the people who donated, and they've let Mercer know that he was in violation of their policies and and also the law about it. But at least from the interviews I've read, Mercer doesn't really seem to understand that. Right. Every statement he's made sounds like a guy who spilled a soda in the back of your car, and not someone who is going to jail for fraud? Mm -hmm. But then again, if he were the brightest bulb in the lamp, he probably wouldn't have faked his way into who can get the luckiest to the tournament. Okay, my favorite part of this whole thing, when GoFundMe first got in touch with him about violating the terms of service, he refused to pay back the money, and he said, I'm pretty sure I have undiagnosed breast cancer what? and the donations were made because I'm sick. That should count. <laughs> that was seriously so his good. excuse. Amazing. And in social mediate news, the Supreme Court lifted restrictions on the Biden administration's ability to communicate with social media companies about misinformation on Friday, making it once more legal for the FBI to tell you that Facebook won't take ownership of your photos at midnight. This is the latest salvo in the war between Democrats' efforts to stop malicious actors that are flooding our social media spaces with dangerous misinformation with complete disregard to the public good and Republicans' efforts to keep doing that. If not lying is a slippery slope towards the death of your thing, your thing is bad. Yep. I don't know how many times yep. we have to yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, so the majority of the court actually got it right somehow. But just to be clear about the conservative position on this, 
Here's how they want the First Amendment to apply when it comes to government officials on the Internet. Lying protected by the First Amendment. Hey, you're lying. That's fascism. Yes. Not protected right. by the First Amendment. Exactly. So so this all stems from a lawsuit jointly filed by the attorneys general of Missouri and Louisiana that claims the Biden administration pressured social media companies to take down posts about vaccines and election interference in a manner that violated the First Amendment. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey actually went so far as to call the administration's lobbying, quote, the worst First Amendment violation in our nation's history, end quote. I'm sure he's counting really? Japanese internment when he <laughs> says that. Just a reminder, during World War One, it was illegal to say that war was bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> comes to the podium covered in trample marks. The important thing is that that guy could yell fire wherever he wanted to. <laughs> I may not agree with your stampede, but I'll defend to the death your right. I'm dying. <laughs> Now, for their part, the Biden administration countered the suit by pointing out that trying to kill people with medical information and fomenting a violent overthrow of the elected government, that's already illegal regardless of who tells social media companies that it is. But that didn't dissuade the Louisiana judge who first heard the case from issuing a sweeping injunction that pretty much barred the entire executive branch of the government from ever saying anything to anyone who worked for a social media company above the janitorial level. Uh, that was obviously appealed, but the conservative Fifth Circuit ultimately upheld the restriction, but they did pare it back uh, considerably in scope. But it was still, like, so completely fucking ridiculous that even the majority of this unconscionably conservative Supreme Court couldn't get behind it. Yeah, and I mean, they still need wiggle room to arrest me for what I've tweeted about them, so I get it. I do Eli get it. is for entertainment purposes only. Just want to make a quick <laughs> reminder about our company right. disclaimer that applies to everything oh, he ever says or does anywhere. Exactly. There's and, the new t-shirt. And look, few people have a more vested interest in protecting the freedom of online speech than a bunch of dudes that do atheist and political podcasts for a living. So if anybody's inclined to be sympathetic to the AGs uh, that are bringing the case, it's us. Right. And to be honest, as much as I support the Biden administration's efforts to crack down on vaccine misinformation and election denialism, I'm really nervous about handing the power to pressure social media platforms over to fucking Donald Trump. Right. Or anybody to people who entrusted Donald Trump with presidential power might vote for in the future. So if we had a Supreme Court that wouldn't send Commissioner Gordon across the ice, I'd be happy they were finally <laughs> taking up this issue. Right. But if you're having trouble deciding where you fall on this case, I want to make it real clear that if you're against the court's decision to lift the ban, that puts you on the same side as Neil Gorsuch, Sam Alito and Clarence Thomas. It's just it's hard for me to imagine anybody who was ever correct found themselves in that position. Yeah. Good rule of thumb. And speaking of how doomed we all are, it's probably a good time for a word from our other sponsor this week. Policy Genius. Dude, you gotta get one. I don't know, Noah. Forty bucks is expensive. I mean, you can't take it with you. But you can leave it behind, thanks to Policy Genius. Rock! Uh, Heath, what are you doing? It's, it's my new character. The Policy Genius Parrot, obviously. I, Heath, I don't think we need a character called the Policy Genius Parrot. What? Come on. I get to do, like, one character. Eli does a million. Wait, till, but he, it's two voices. Three? Three Th voices? Three, three voices. Sorry. But, Heath, Policy Genius doesn't need a fancy mascot to be a great product. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Plus, Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. And Policy Genius has licensed, award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to PolicyGenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's PolicyGenius.com. Okay, so no Policy Genius Parrot? Nah, sorry, man. Fine. Fine, I'll go change. Did you sew together real parrot feathers? Yeah, and it took a while. It, it looks nice. Too late! Well, now I feel bad. Four. I forgot Melania. I do four. Yeah. Okay. And we're back. 
Next up in headlines, in Who Moved My Cheese Bro News, <laughs> we have some delightful new developments in the Georgia election subversion case against Kenneth Cheesebro, Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump, and 15 other traitors who tried to steal Georgia's electoral votes in the 2020 election whilst literally chanting Stop the Steal yep. as their motto. Cheesebro and Powell both pleaded not guilty and were the first two defendants going to trial. And last week, their legal team made an absurd request about jury selection that got emphatically denied by the judge. But more importantly, the moment they stepped into the courtroom for a pre-trial hearing and they saw the prosecutors like already drinking from beer helmets in celebration <laughs> and doing parkour <laughs> on the tables. Cheese bro and power are like, guilty, switch to guilty. We plead yeah. guilty now. We'd like to narc on Donald Trump right yes, now, please. Yeah. We'll narc. We'll narc. <laughs> we flip. Wait. Heath, are you telling me that this third string list of treasonous nobodies aren't loyal when the chips are down? I am shocked. Yes. Shocked, I say. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I don't know that it'll move the needle much, but I feel like Trump's odds of conviction went down when Sidney Powell agreed to be a witness against him, right? <laughs> okay, that was the one bad thing mentioned by the prosecutors. They were like, yeah, it does make Powell our source of yes. information <laughs> about a thing. <laughs> That's not great. We're going to see what we can do. Yeah, so... Big thanks to Nick for the links, skeptocratnews at gmail.com if you want to help out. So I'll start with the jury selection thing. The basic rules are pretty simple. You can ask general questions like, do you know anything about the case during voir dire? Or are you capable of hearing the evidence with an open mind? That kind of thing. But you are not allowed to ask questions that make a prospective juror prejudge a verdict or comment on the personal lives of the people on trial. So... The defense team was like, we'll have to be subtle and tricky about this. Would you like to wear this free MAGA hat unironically right now? And do you personally like Donald Trump circle? Yes or no? Do you like, <laughs> like, like him? <laughs> the list they submitted, it's almost that. It was so it's incredibly so stupid that. <laughs> that Judge Scott McAfee was just barely able to get through his ruling of absolutely not without laughing in their faces. Here's what the defense team tried to get through. They wanted to read the following statements and ask potential jurors for their feelings about each one. Statement one. I think that Trump and his associates tried to steal the election and throw out my vote. What? First up, guilty or what? That's guilty. the first question. <laughs> first question. This is really going to whittle it down, y'all. I'm kidding. <laughs> Statement two, I think the First Amendment should not protect people who spread political misinformation about elections. <laughs> Statement three, I think every single person who is accused of helping Donald Trump try to overturn the election should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Oh, my God. That's a follow up question. How guilty, though? <laughs> right. <laughs> so direct. The reason they added question three is literally what Noah just said. Right. It was like, well, maybe we'll let some people who think he's guilty. Yes. Us if they were <laughs> like, <laughs> just going to give him a slap on the wrist. I don't think we can ask it. We can we fairly ask people thing. not to think <laughs> he did it. Yeah. That was their backup plan <laughs> to the stupid thing that wasn't working <laughs> Place. Yeah. <laughs> Statement four. I think MAGA Republicans are mostly made up of radicals and white supremacists. Statement five. And that's how they would have gotten me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it's good to have in there. I get I get why they wanted it. That's a not fucking happening. shave and a haircut as far as I'm yeah. concerned. <laughs> I've been like, hmm, ah, here's the thing. Eli just jumps out of the box and punches <laughs> something. Yeah, we caught one. We caught one. There it is. And finally, statement five, I think anyone who publicly claimed that the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump is guilty of spreading guilty. misinformation the word that is undermines guilty. our democracy. <laughs> the word guilty is in there. Jesus Christ. Statement six, when did you stop beating your democracy? <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> this, that's another rule. No leading questions is another rule of voir dire. Yeah. So stupid. So according to Judge McAfee, quote, we have decades of case law telling us that we're not supposed to be asking jurors to give their opinion up front. So, pretty fucking clear. But I really wish that McAfee could have let it happen just for a little bit, just for the comedy. You know what I mean? Because the defense team was hoping to find MAGA Republicans from Georgia, obviously. And there is... No chance those people were going to correctly parse out the double negatives in their little plan there. Like, the First Amendment should not protect 
misinformation. I don't not. Uh, mm, fuck. They definitely would have messed that up. Like, I wish McAfee could just allow the first day of jury selection so we could watch it happen like that and then just be like, no, nah, no. Nah, obviously, that's canceled because it's illegal. We're going to start over. Your but Honor, no. we'd like to request a Squid Games. Can we do a Squid <laughs> Games? Right. It would have been so fun. That might have that would have been more legal than what they did, maybe, depending on the Squid Game. And that brings us to Flipathon 2023, which is just so fun. The jury selection might not even matter at this point. Powell and Cheesebro never even got to the first day of trial, and the jury never even got selected, and they both knew they were going to lose. Their plea deals make them into informants against other defendants, like Trump and Giuliani, of course. So Giuliani is definitely going to flip, too. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. But even just Powell's testimony alone is going to be especially damning. She was present during a meeting in the Oval Office on December 18th of 2020, during which Trump had the Kraken team start drafting executive orders to have the Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security start seizing physical voting machines in Georgia. They also worked up a plan where Trump would appoint Sidney Powell to a special counsel position and have her seize the voting machines. The only people in that room with like any sort of grasp on reality were a few White House attorneys, like old school ones, who were like, what the fuck are you idiots talking about? This is so illegal. <laughs> Just Tyler trying to dig his way through the wall. I can't hear you while I'm digging, by the way. Yes, I yeah, can't right, emphasize right. enough well, that so hearing thing, you would also be a crime. <laughs> I, I, I feel like they need to go, like the first day in court, they need to go, look, I know, on the one hand, she's Sidney Powell. On the other hand, you can't, you can't have credibility and access to Trump's inner circle. Those two things cannot coexist. We <laughs> right. had to choose one or the other. Yeah, it's tricky. So those two plans that they made at that meeting never happened. But that doesn't matter. First of all, it's illegal to start stealing an election. Mm -hmm. You can't do that either. It's not like a magic threshold, like you're passing a bag of money to a cop during a drug sting in a movie. Also, January 6th happened. Yeah. Also, they literally tried to steal voting machines later in January in this other thing that we caught them doing. Speaking of which, one other important flipper is bail bondsman Scott Hall. He spent several hours inside a restricted area at the election office in Coffee County, Georgia, on the day that we now know the voting systems were breached. We know that because he was on camera like a fucking yes. idiot. And now he's going to testify about it to avoid jail time. It's just so great. The liars, they're all panicking. And this is, it's my favorite. It's just there might be consequences. How, how often do you think Trump has been like, all right. I'm ready to make a deal. And they've been like, no, man, that's no. everyone is making a deal about you. You have you are the one they want. I can give him Ruby. I can give him Rudy Giuliani. Nobody wants Rudy Giuliani, man. We wouldn't even let him flip because he farts a lot in meetings. We have enough without him. And in three Reichs in your out news. This story is about football, not it's baseball, football. but that's the yep. pun I thought okay. of. I will not be taking questions at this what? time. What? Seriously? Hot, hot Reich. Right nice. there. Uh, there you go. Reich Ditka. Adolf Hutler. Come on. There's <laughs> okay. so many. Hot, hot Reich was great. I, I wanted it on this joke so bad, Heath, but as soon as I thought of Frank Reich, I couldn't think of anything else. I was just stuck yeah. there for the rest <laughs> of the time. So, yeah. Anyway, an Ohio school football coach says he was unfairly forced to resign by his school district and meant no offense to opposing players after he and his team repeatedly used the word Nazi as a game call in a match last month. Okay, I think I'm most offended by Eli calling it a football match just now. Like, I don't feel good about that being where I ranked it, but... That's what's in my heart right they now. I'm just mad about that. numeric costumes for a gridiron soiree. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you. So Brooklyn High School coach Tim McFarland said he never meant any offense by using the term and that it, quote, didn't even occur to him that it could be taken as anti-Semitic to say what? Nazi. But Good. others have pointed out that the plays were called during a game against Beachwood High School, a school based in a largely Jewish Cleveland oh, suburb. Jesus Christ. Okay, that's horrible. Also, where were all the schools that were not offended by kids yelling Nazi yes! in that area? I would like Ohio. those pointed out to me now. <laughs> oh, right. Yep. 
I live there, state look, of Ohio. Got for it. What it's worth, not realizing that repeatedly yelling Nazi could be taken as anti-Semitic. Another great reason to force you to resign, right there, man. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, but don't worry. Tim's lawyer has a great explanation because, according to him, it's a historical term. Well, sure. The history of what you ask? That's right. Football. What? Football history, citing an Ohio school and coaching Holocaust. book from the 1990s. Patikos, that's his lawyer, said Nazi is often used in football to warn teammates of what is known as a blitz. Oh, so Jesus you see, they blitz weren't Krieg. That's literally from it's fine. Yeah, they weren't shouting the name of the party that exterminated the families of their football opponents. They were referencing the Battle of the Bulge, which is totally different. Mm -hmm. We were using Mike to warn teammates about the Blitz like every other football team ever. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, but then people were like, oh, you're yelling right. You just can't win with all this woke <laughs> stuff. It's impossible. Yeah. yeah, rumor has it that they're going to stop calling the Jet Sweep the 9 11 now, too. It's, 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 it's moving in the right direction. <laughs> well, in spite of that perfectly reasonable, chill and cool explanation that McFarland gave them, people are still mad. Can you believe it? And as I said at the beginning of the story, McFarland was asked to resign, or as he would call it, holodomoring his career. Either way, <laughs> they don't make him like they used to, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah, isn't it though? And finally tonight, in If This Was Your Identity, You'd Steal a Different One too. news. If Eli <laughs> was doing a bit where he posed as a Republican congressional candidate and just did all the worst possible shit to see if there was any point where Republicans would stop supporting him, he would be George Santos. George Santos, yep. Except more Jewish. And and yep. we were reminded of that yet again a couple of weeks ago when federal prosecutors issued 23 new felony charges against the congressman that included, but are not limited to, stealing his donors' credit card numbers, overcharging them, and then putting the money in his own personal bank account. And probably fucking their dad. Yeah, I mean, fucking someone's dad is downright friendly. No, I mean, you're just confusing the <laughs> issue now. All right, yeah, no, fair, fair. Now, my favorite aspect of this entire story is how George Santos found out about it. Because when the news of the indictment broke, Santos was in one of the many closed-door meetings over the last couple of weeks about who was going to succeed McCarthy as speaker, theoretically, if someone were ever to do that. And even by then, <laughs> they'd grown so contentious and distrustful that they were already forcing all the people attending the meetings to surrender their cell phones at the door so nobody would live-tweet how dysfunctional <laughs> it was. So, so nobody can see our situation. Yes. Just know things about us. We have right. to get rid of that. So after the, like, 11 three-hour screaming match of the week or whatever, Santos emerges from this meeting to a gaggle of reporters shoving microphones in his face, asking questions like, is it true you stole the identities of your donors and how do you respond to all these new felony charges? And then he had to admit that he didn't even know which felonies they were talking about. Yes. He comes out and he's <laughs> like, oh, a lot of you. Sorry. Uh, let me just check my messages. <laughs> oh, one second. Oh, God. Okay. I got to keep my Duolingo straight. Don't let me forget get that uh, josh, <laughs> josh sent me like nine memes is it in here no oh, okay there it is there it is felonies got it okay sorry what was the question let's do it i speak aramaic by the it's way i'm the lord jesus christ dish <laughs> So yeah, so the new charges are every bit as delicious as the others because every victim here so far is somebody who would donate to a Republican congressional candidate in 2022. And also the Republican National Committee, I guess, because one of the new charges is that he actually lied about how much money he was raising so that he would qualify for assistance from the National Party's funds. Uh, from the indictment, quote, to create the public appearance that his campaign had met the financial benchmarks and was otherwise financially viable, Santos and Marx, that's Nancy Marx's campaign treasurer at the time, agreed to falsely report to the FEC that at least 10 family members of Santos and Marx had made significant financial <laughs> contributions to the campaign, end quote. Okay, yeah. Santos and Marx is just a good name for his whole situation with voters. Yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah no shit. Did I, um, did no, a musical? Huh? Well, there you go. And to, like, other times they just make shit up. Like when Santos Schmuck said that he loaned a half a million dollars to his own campaign despite <laughs> having only $8,000 in his bank account at the time. So Yeah, he ended up stealing his own credit card number. He's like, damn it, sorry, first I have it. I, just, <laughs> I saw it on the ledger. All right, better start a GoFundMe for legal fees to defend myself. 
Yeah, and another one to prosecute myself, Might I guess. Well. I'm yeah, starting to. I'm going to get two. Get a, two bites of that apple. Uh, but most of the new charges relate to identity theft. Specifically, his campaign was in the habit of gathering credit card data, charging the card over and over again in excess of both the authorized donation and the legal limit for an individual contribution to a political campaign, and then sticking that money into the campaign's coffers. Or just keeping it. The, the indictment mentions one donor whose card was charged for over $12,000, most of which just wound up in Santos's personal <laughs> bank account. All right, guys, the hedge fund Ponzi schemes are getting way too thinky. It's like yeah. a whole thing. <laughs> what if we just take money and keep it? Just take I money. Just take the money. Yeah, and that works on Republicans, apparently. So, yeah, so at, at this point, it's hard to read the list of indictments without slipping into the tune of 12 Days of Christmas, but it's only <laughs> now, after the second round of indictments, that Eli's bit would start to come to fruition, because it's only now that Santos is facing the threat of a consequence from his fellow Republican lawmakers. Uh, specifically, a group of six Republican congressmen from Santos's home state of New York have introduced a resolution to expel Santos from Congress which would pass a floor vote in a heartbeat, but it would not get a floor vote even if we had a Speaker of the House, which we don't and won't, apparently. But anyway, there you have it. All it took was nine counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, two counts of making false statements to the House, two counts of making false statements to the FEC, two counts of submitting false documents to the FEC, two counts of aggravated identity theft, one count of device fraud, one count of conspiracy, and one count of theft of public funds, plus at least... 46 documented provable lies that aren't against the law. That's where the line is for them. Yikes. Some of them. And he didn't even steal identities like, you know, genteelly. It was aggravated. I like that they have (laughs) a separate category for that. All right. On that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. Thanks to the grand old party for the entertainment. (laughs) And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Serena, Evan, Nate, Brett, Scott, Helen, Jay, Warhammer 300, Bryce, Charles, Lisa, G. Lafleur, or maybe Guy Lafleur like the hockey player but spelled differently, a very obstinate beaver, and X. Arc, E-X-C-A-R-C, Exarc. You are the grilled cheese and tomato soup on a cold October night of human beings, and we love you. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. My son's been listening to this Cookie Monster Tommy on repeat, and he has this song called But Me Wait, which is a takeoff on Pink's um, I Don't Care. So I've had I Don't Care stuck in my head. He's like, me want a cookie, but we have to wait. Me don't, da, dum, 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 but <laughs> okay. me wait. It's actually great. It's very charming. Everything they do is wonderful. I like that. Um, but I've been thinking of the original song, and today I was listening to it, and I was like doing the earworm thing where the lyrics were going through my head, and I realized that for years... I thought the lyric, I put his shit into a bag and tossed it down the stairs. I thought that was, I took a shit into a bag and tossed it down the stairs. I thought that was such a bizarre side thing that she mentions when everything else is such like a very clear angry girlfriend moment. Did you take a time out from dealing with a breakup and then I chat in a bag through it down the stairs to express my emotion and then we continued. <laughs> that makes sense to me. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.